In this video, what we're going to do is work with information in the oscillating plane. So what we have here is a parametric curve. R of t equals 3 sine of t, 2 cosine of t, t squared plus t. At the point where t equals 0, what we want to do is find an equation of the oscillating plane, the radius of the oscillating circle, and the center of the oscillating circle. We are going to do our computations entirely in terms of the vectors r, r prime, and r double prime, so position, velocity, and acceleration. If you've seen other videos where I do these kinds of computations, I often work in terms of the unit tangent, normal, and binormal vectors, so I'm going to do something different in this video. That means we're going to have a bunch of formulas that you might not have seen in some of my previous videos entirely in terms of position, velocity, and acceleration. Before we start with oscillating plane, what I would like to do is show you an animation of this curve and these pieces of information so that we know what we're looking for geometrically. So here is the parametric curve r of t. We are interested in the point r of 0, so every computation we do is going to assume that t equals 0. At this point along the curve, we are going to compute the velocity vector r prime of 0 and the acceleration vector r double prime of 0. Both of these vectors live in the oscillating plane. So the velocity vector r prime always points us forwards in the oscillating plane. And then the acceleration vector r double prime also lives in the oscillating plane and points us somewhere into the bend. So it always lives in one particular half of the oscillating plane. Since these two vectors for this curve both live in the oscillating plane and are not parallel, we can cross them to get a vector orthogonal to the plane. With this orthogonal vector, and the knowledge that r of 0 is a point on the plane, we can write down a description for the oscillating plane. So that will answer our first question. Then what we want to do is find the radius of the oscillating circle. That's like the circle that's most tangent to this curve at the point r of 0. The radius will point us from r of 0 out to the center of the oscillating circle. I want to visualize the circle in this movie, but writing down the equation of the circle is beyond the scope of this lesson. It can be done, of course, I did it here in this MATLAB demonstration, but I like to explain how to get this equation with linear algebra, whereas this video is intended for multivariable calculus students who might not have that background. So our goal for the rest of this lesson is going to be to write down the equation of the plane, to find the radius, and to find the center. All of our computations will be in terms of the position, the velocity, and the acceleration, r, r prime, and r double prime. All right, let's start with the oscillating plane. To write down the equation of a plane, what you need is a point and a vector perpendicular to the plane. Now the point is r of 0. If you think back to the animation that we just looked at, the vector orthogonal to the plane that we will use is the cross product of r prime and r double prime, the velocity and acceleration. Okay, so let's compute each of these. For r of 0, we're just going to plug t equals 0 into our vector description. 3 times sine of 0 is 0. 2 times cosine of 0 is 2 times 1, so that's 2. And then 0 squared plus 0 is 0. Okay, so the point 0, 2, 0 lives on the plane. The velocity vector in general is 3 cosine of t, negative 2 sine of t, 2t plus 1. If we plug in t equals 0, we get that the velocity when time is 0 is 3, 0, 1. Okay, in general, the acceleration vector is going to be negative 3 sine of t, negative 2 cosine of t, 2. So that tells us that when t is 0, the acceleration is 0, negative 2, 2. Our vector perpendicular to the plane, which we can denote n, is going to be the cross product of these two because both live in the oscillating plane. And since these two vectors are not parallel, we can safely cross them and get an orthogonal vector. So let's see if we do the cross product here, looking at this pairing. The first coordinate will be 0 times 2 minus negative 2 times 1, so that's going to be 2. 
The second coordinate will be 1 times 0 minus 3 times 2, so that's going to be negative 6. And the third component is 3 times negative 2 minus 0, so that's also negative 6. If you want, you can pull a 2 out and use instead the vector 1, negative 3, negative 3. The coordinates 1, negative 3, negative 3 can give us the coefficients for the general form for our plane equation. So going straight to general form, we can say that 1x minus 3y minus 3z equals a constant on the right-hand side, which you can get by taking the known point 0, 2, 0 and plugging that in for x, y, and z. So 0 minus 3 times 2 minus 3 times 0 gives us negative 6. So now we've completed our first task. We've written down an equation for the oscillating plane. The next thing we want to do is find the radius of the oscillating circle, and for that we'll need a few computations that we've already done, so I've brought those over. We will need the velocity, acceleration vectors, and their cross product. And that's because while I usually characterize the radius of the oscillating circle as just 1 divided by the curvature, you can express the curvature in terms of the velocity and acceleration. So let me just say this out loud. The curvature is the length of velocity cross acceleration divided by the speed cubed. We want 1 over that, which is like flipping what I just said. So on top we'll have the speed cubed, that's the length of the velocity vector when t equals 0. We'll cube that. And divide it by the length of that cross product that we've already done. Alright, so we need to compute the length of the velocity vector, also called the speed, and cube it. So that's going to be like the square root of 9 plus 0 plus 1, so that's square root of 10 cubed. So that's root 10 times root 10 times root 10. So overall that's 10 square root of 10. And then we also need the cross product of velocity and acceleration when t equals 0. That cross product we've already done, and its length is going to be 2 times the square root of 1 plus 9 plus 9, so square root of 19. All right, and that's it. Now we can say what the radius of the oscillating circle is. It's 10 square root of 10 divided by 2 square root of 19, which I'm going to choose to write as 5 times the square root of 10 over 19. To finish this exercise, let's find the center of the osculating circle. And again, we'll need things we've already computed, so I've gone ahead and copied them over. You should have these in your notes if you're writing this down. It's a fun derivation to come up with the center of the osculating circle entirely in terms of r, r prime, and r double prime. I'm not going to do the derivation here, I'm just going to tell you what the formula is. But if you want to find the center of an osculating circle for a parametric curve, all you need is r plus the length of r prime to the fourth power, in other words, the speed raised to the fourth power, divided by the length of the cross product of r prime and r double prime that we've already found. We need that squared, so that ratio times r double prime, so the acceleration, minus the projection of the acceleration onto the velocity vector. So you can write that as r double prime dot r prime divided by r prime dot r prime, or the speed squared, times r prime. Okay, so it's a nice exercise in geometry to come up with that formula, but there it is. We have almost everything we need. Okay, so with all the computations we've already done, I'm going to write down the center as a position vector. It's going to be 0, 2, 0, so that's r, plus speed raised to the fourth power, so that's square root of 10 to the fourth power, so 10 squared is 100 divided by the square of the length of the velocity cross acceleration. So that length was 2 squared of 19. Squaring that is 4 times 19, which is 76. Then we have the acceleration when time equals 0. So that was 0, negative 2, 2, minus, we haven't done these dot products yet, but luckily dot products are not too bad. So if we dot the velocity and acceleration together, we get 0, 0, 2. 
and the velocity dotted with itself is going to be 10. That's the square of the speed again. And then times the velocity vector, which was 3, 0, 1. At this point, it's just a question of crunching those numbers. So let me go ahead and tell you that the center is located at negative 15 over 19, negative 12 over 19, and 45 over 19. All right, that concludes our exercise. I hope you enjoyed working through these computations entirely in terms of r, r prime, and r double prime. To finish this lesson, let me put up the graphic of what we've computed. Thank you for your attention.